The Huawei Nova 11 series has been around for a few months now, but they have finally made their way to the South African market. Today I'll be testing out both the Nova 11 and Nova 11 Pro side by side, and let me start off by saying they are both fantastic value for money upper mid-range smartphones. They are similar in terms of design, chipsets, battery capacity, and back camera sensors, but that's pretty much where their similarities end. The Nova 11 Pro has a larger curved display as opposed to the Nova 11's flat screen. The Nova 11 Pro has a stronger glass front thanks to the inclusion of Kunlun glass. It has faster charging and is the only one with two selfie cameras, that being an ultra wide and an interesting telephoto portrait selfie sensor. Each device comes with a jelly case in their box, as well as a 6 amp charging cable and a 66 watt or 100 watt charging brick depending on which one you decide to pick up. This is Technic and this is my full review and comparison of Huawei's best ever Nova series devices, the Nova 11 and Nova 11 Pro. The Huawei Nova 11 is retailing in South Africa for 12 triple nine Rand, while the Nova 11 Pro is a bit more than that at 16 triple nine. They may be very incremental upgrades over their predecessors and their asking prices may be a bit steep, but they are still very solid devices from their specs to their designs. And speaking of their designs, while they are very similar to last year's, the Nova 11 Pro now has a new vegan leather backplate, while the regular Nova 11 is very flat, which I actually quite like. Which means the Nova 11 looks and feels very different to the Nova 10, which actually looked identical to its Pro counterpart. The Nova 11 Pro looks similar to the Nova 10 Pro aside from its leather back which comes in two different color variants, that being green or black, which are the same color options you get with the regular Nova 11 as well. Both of their camera modules look identical as well, which is a good thing since they are absolutely stunning and both of them match the color of their back plates depending on which color you decide to pick up. The color of their back plates also matches their plastic side frames and since the Nova 11 Pro has a curved back and front, its side frames are curved too, while the Nova 11 has squared off frames to go along with its flat display and flat back design. The Nova 11 is also thinner at 6.88mm as opposed to the 11 Pro's 7.88mm thickness and the Nova 11 is lighter too at 168g compared to the 11 Pro's 188g of weight. The Nova 11 unfortunately unfortunately has a plastic back plate, while the 11 Pro has a monogram vegan leather back which has a soft feeling texture. The vanilla version has a glass display, however the Pro variant comes packed in with Huawei's own Kunlun glass which is the same glass we see used within Huawei's top end flagship devices and offers a 10 times increase in drop resistance. Both of them have always on displays which can be permanently enabled and both of them offer optical in display fingerprint sensors which may be a bit too low down but work very well. The Nova 11 one-ups the 11 Pro in terms of thinner bezels wrapping around its screen which comes in at just 1.59mm thick thanks to its flexible OLED display which makes for almost no chin when compared to its Pro sibling. But the Nova 11 Pro has its vanilla brother beat in terms of actual displays. They both offer OLED panels but the Nova 11 Pro is curved instead of flat and is larger at 6.78 inches as opposed to 6.7 inches. It also has a higher screen resolution which packs in 429 pixels per inch as opposed to the Nova 11's 395 ppi as well as a higher screen brightness which I measured to be around 800 nits instead of the Nova 11's 600 nits of peak brightness. Both of them can display over a billion colors and offer a wide DCI-P3 color space not to mention they both support HDR10, HDR10 plus and Widevine L1 content. They also both pack in 1440Hz PWM dimming, a 120Hz fixed refresh rate and a 300Hz touch sampling rate. In terms of software, they're both running EMUI 13 in the global market, which is skinned over Android 12. We do have HMS Core, which is Huawei Mobile Services, instead of Google Mobile Services Framework, but you can get Google Apps and you can still sign into your accounts without many issues. You can't exactly sign into your Google account within settings, but you can sign into it with something called Gbox. 
Gbox is essentially a workaround which allows you to sideload apps, but it works similarly to a phone that doesn't require it at all. All you have to do is download an app you like within Gbox and it will then add that app shortcut to your home screen, which you can then simply tap on to open one of your favorite Google apps, such as Google itself. There's a tiny preview screen of Gbox before going into the Google app, but it works perfectly and you can sign in as well. You can do the same with YouTube as well as any other Google apps. It gets faster the more you use it and there's no strange badge at the bottom of the icon which we have seen in the past. That said, Huawei's app gallery has improved quite a bit. You can search for any app on the web within it to find apps from Gbox and it goes even further to search for apps with something called Petal Search, which finds APKs online in which you can then download and install directly from a third party app gallery such as APK Pure. Otherwise, the app gallery has all the non-Google apps you use on the daily. The software itself is classy and is packed with features such as Celia, which is Huawei's own voice assistant, customizable folders, which allows you to create a large folder so that you can tap directly on an icon within that folder without having to open the folder up itself. There's customizable widgets too, which can be stacked on top of one another. And of course, there are loads of different personalization options available within settings. They both offer the exact same 4,500 milliamp hour battery capacity, but the Nova 11 Pro has faster 100 watt charging as opposed to the Nova 11's 66 watt wide charging speeds. And the Nova 11 Pro is also the only one with a dual vapor chamber liquid cooling system. This year's Nova 11 series is still subject to the 5G network ban which means they lack 5G and are both running on the same 4G chipsets, that being the 6 nanometer processed Snapdragon 778G CPU. They both have 8 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM and 256 gigs of UFS 2.1 storage and both of them score similarly in all different kinds of benchmark tests. They also make use of Bluetooth 5.2, NFC and Wi-Fi 6. Haptics seem to be a lot better on the Pro variants, but both of them offer dual stereo speakers. So let's go ahead and give them a listen. So you can't exactly go wrong with either device in terms of performance and speakers, but now it's time to focus on their cameras. So let's start things off with selfie camera performance. Both devices have punch hole notches at the tops of their displays, though the Nova 11 has a single punch hole and is centered, while the Nova 11 Pro has a pull shaped notch and is tucked in the top left corner. They both have the same 60 megapixel ultra wide selfie cameras, which have an f2.4 aperture, 17 millimeter focal length and 100 degree field of view. However, only the 11 Pro has autofocus. The Nova 11 Pro also has an additional sensor, that being an 8 megapixel close-up portrait telephoto camera with an f2.2 aperture and a 52 millimeter focal length offering 2 times optical zoom and even 5 times digital zoom. They can both shoot at native 60 megapixels which reverts to their widest focal length with the 11 Pro offering a more natural look. And the same can be said when binning them down at either 0.7x or when cropped in at 1x which is the max zoom for the Nova 11. The 11 Pro can zoom in optically by two times due to that telephoto selfie camera and though I'd probably barely use this function, it does pack in fantastic detail. And for some reason, there is also a 5x digital zoom option when using the same lens on the Nova 11 Pro. For those of you who like to take photos of your eyes, I guess. You can use that zoom lens for portraits too, though it caps out at three times zoom and two times optical zoom in portrait mode looks amazing with near perfect edge detection. Of course, both of them offer portrait mode at one times, but neither of them have the best edge detection here. What's up guys, this is Technic recording a 1080p 60fps selfie video on the brand new Huawei Nova 11 and Nova 11 Pro. Unfortunately, there is no Voco mode video option when using the selfie cams but there is silky smooth 60 fps when recording at 1080p and you can switch from wide to 0.8x to 1x all the way back to wide field of view but the best thing about recording video with the selfie cams on the brand new huawei nova 11 series is that you can record at 4k 30 fps selfie video and while you can switch from wide to 0.8x to 1x as well on the nova 11 the nova 11 pro takes things further by going from wide to 0.8x can go to 1x all the way up to 2x and all the way up to 5x if this is something that you are keen on 
Of course, you can go all the way back on both devices as well. They both offer great 4K selfie video performance at night as well, and while the Nova 11 Pro looks more natural, it tends to suffer from more noise grain. Neither of them have a night mode option at their widest focal lengths, but the screen flash certainly helps produce brighter images. Night mode looks decent at 1x on both devices, but I tend to favor the shot on the Nova 11, which is also the case when enabling the flash. Portrait mode seems to be better on the standard Nova 11 as well, but white balance seems to be a bit off, especially when the flash is on. The Nova 11 Pro takes an okay shot when setting portrait mode to two times zoom, but looks a lot better when the flash is enabled. So selfie performance is great on both devices and I'm extremely happy to see the inclusion of 4K selfie video this time around. Zooming in is no doubt fun on the Nova 11 Pro's secondary selfie camera, but if you can't exactly see yourself using it very often, then it's no real reason to purchase the 11 Pro over the regular Nova 11. And unlike selfie sensors, their back cameras are exactly the same. That being a dual camera setup consisting of an eight megapixel ultra wide camera with an f2.2 aperture, a 16 millimeter focal length for a 112 degree field of view and autofocus, as well as a 50 megapixel RYYB main camera sensor with an f1.9 aperture, a 27 millimeter focal length and QPD full pixel precise focusing. Both setups also make use of a laser auto focusing sensor and a 10 channel color temperature sensor. Starting with their macro modes, which utilizes their ultra wide sensors, both look fantastic, but the Nova 11 seems to pack in more detail. Standard ultra wide shots come out decently as well, but I feel the 11 Pro is a tad too oversaturated and a bit too tinted. They can both shoot at native 50 megapixels using their mains, and both shots come out identical and are top notch. When binned down, they both offer more color, but AI tends to oversaturate things, which seems to be dialed back a bit at two times digital zoom. Things come out more detailed on the 11 Pro at five times digital zoom, and this is more evident at 10 times zoom, which is the max zoom levels for both devices. Both look great when taking a snap of a human subject, and both do a great job when set to portrait mode too with the 11 Pro taking a slight lead here in terms of detail. They also both offer two times digital zoom in portrait mode, and again, the 11 Pro comes out on top thanks to better edge detection. There is unfortunately no bokeh video mode option. However, both look incredible when recording regular 4K 30fps video, which provides a nice natural depth of field. Recording 4K video while walking around looks great on both, but I feel the 11 Pro is slightly more stable. And while 4K video mode is capped at 30fps, you'll be be happy to hear there is a 60 fps option when recording 1080p video using the main camera, which once again has the 11 Pro coming out more stable. The regular Nova 11 tends to suffer from focusing issues when recording with the ultra wide camera, and both of them are limited to 30 fps when recording at 1080p resolution. But it's good to see that you can actually record at 4K resolution with the ultra wide sensors, which isn't something you typically see on mid range devices. Recording 4K video at night is an perfect on either device, but the frame rate does automatically drop to 24 FPS to make things a tad brighter. And the frame rate also dips when recording 4K video at night using their main cameras, which has results come out a lot better when compared to ultra wide video. There is no night mode option when taking photos with their ultra wide sensors, and neither of them come out perfect. But there is night mode when taking photos with their main cameras. And in my opinion, the Nova 11 Pro takes the win here. The regular Nova 11 is a tad more detailed at a two times zoom level, and the same can be said when taking a photo at five times zoom which is quite the opposite to what we saw during the day. 10 times zoom is once again their max zoom level and looks identical on both devices. And once again, they both produce fantastic photos when taking a snap of a human subject. At night, the regular Nova 11 tends to take a better portrait mode shot at 1x, but both look identical when setting portrait mode to a two times zoom level. So both the Nova 11 and Nova 11 Pro produce similar photo and video results when shooting with their rear cameras which makes sense since they use the exact same sensors. However, I tend to favor the Nova 11 Pro results during the day and the standard Nova 11 when taking photos at night. 
But if you are considering either device, I personally wouldn't put one over the other in terms of camera performance, but rather in terms of their other aspects. If you'd prefer a flat screen and squared off design, then the Nova 11 is the phone for you. But if you'd rather have a curved screen and body, then the Nova 11 Pro is a no brainer, especially considering it has a higher screen resolution, stronger screen protection, as well as faster wired charging. That said, it's really hard to recommend the Nova 11 Pro for those of you who already own a Nova 10 Pro since they're just so damn similar. Either way, let me know your thoughts of Huawei's latest Nova series devices in the comments section down below. This is Tech Neck and I'll catch you in the next one.